Recently, I've gotten into summing, which has been uh, you know kind of a breakthrough moment. I think the first breakthrough was really using analog keys and getting into getting into the Dave Smith stuff. It just has such a great sound and and it's just really inspiring. And every time you turn it on, the preset almost sounds a little bit different each time, or you're just feeling it a little differently. And uh, maybe the oscillators have you know, a different temperature that day or whatever. So. Analog synths were huge, but now I really like doing summing. I think it adds just that little bit extra punch. I can really drive the mixes harder. Um, it can use uh, get more loudness with less compression. It's a little more present. The transients are a little snappier. Um, I upgraded from a Apogee Rosetta to uh, this Prism Sound Orpheus, which has been great. So this is sort of the center of my studio. This and a Dangerous D-Box. So I use it as a monitor controller. Um, you can hook up a couple sets of monitors. And it's got a talkback switch. I can, usually, actually, the vocalists will be in the same room. So I'll use talkback to just so we can hear each other in the headphones. Some of the singers are really loud, uh, like Elizabeth. So I have to have the headphones on, or I have to leave the room sometimes. <laughs> so I have the headphones on, but that talkback switch is great. And uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to rig that so I can use it as like an SSL you know, a little mic. I think I know there's a way it'll sound cool because it's actually pretty decent quality to it. Um, so what I'll do when I'm summing stuff, when it's, I start summing from the very beginning, it's part of the template. Drums go to the first stereo pair, uh, vocals are three, four, uh, bass and some live instruments are five and six. Seven and eight are any keyboards and effects, so any reverbs and delays. Um, and it just, I don't know, my plugins sound better, summed, I can hear things better in the mixing process, uh, and it really comes into effect with large track counts. I think if you're, the more tracks you have, um, and the more things are fighting for that bandwidth. So with each of these stems, I'm getting a couple more dB of uh, headroom, so that really adds up when you have, you know, four stems. Some guys, you know, are summing much larger systems and it makes even that much more of a difference. So I'd have to get another Orpheus and uh, another D-Box to do that, but so you can go pretty crazy with it. But this is great for my setup. The core is just my computer, my Orpheus, my D-Box, uh, Pro Tools, and my monitors. Um, I don't use a lot of automation with the Digio 2 or anything. It's just um, sort of point and click and I use this as my transport, which has been great. So all these tracks are routed in to their own pairs, and because they have their own pairs, they have that dedicated uh, bandwidth, so they have a little more room to breathe. All that stuff goes out from Pro Tools. Um, it has its own fader. Sometimes I can just I'll throw a, an API or SSL compressor on that bus, and I really like the control of having using buses to build it up bit by bit. So each bus is maybe controlling the dynamic range a little bit. Maybe I'll be EQing out just some low frequencies. Um, but generally, I leave it fairly clean. I'll put a uh, overkiller on it, you know, just a really good limiter. I love uh, Isotope Alloy, and I actually work pretty closely with the company. It was a plugin I helped a little bit with the design on. It's got an amazing limiter on it, so it'll just it'll never clip, and it always sounds great. It never sounds like it's getting squeezed. So a lot of times I'll put alloy on the buses, so I make sure that nothing's clipping at any point of the process. You do have to be careful because you can drive it hard and not know it because you don't see any clipping lights. But as long as you listen well, you can get it uh, to sound great. So yeah, everything's coming out of Pro Tools, um, going through the converter, it's getting summed in the Orpheus, uh, and you see it all light up there. Comes back as a stereo pair into Pro Tools, um, I'll use Vintage Warmer to sort of beef it up a little bit. I love Vintage Warmer. I think it's easily the best plugin uh, for the money out there. Use that, just a little bit of compression, maybe a couple dB. Uh, I always have the fat mode on, usually multi-mode. It sounds so good it really doesn't sound like software. And I think that is a trend we're seeing with a lot of new stuff. Um, I'll start in there, go into Ozone maybe drive the inputs pretty hard in Ozone because it likes that. Um, don't use a lot of multi-band compression just because I feel like I don't have as much control in there and I think it, with mastering it limits the process. Uh, I just use the limiter, maybe a little EQ. 
uh, maybe a little widening. But you know, when I first started using it, I did too much widening, and it just starts to sound colored. So a little bit of that, and sometimes a little harmonic distortion. But um, now with Alloy, because it has no latency, which is a big deal in Pro Tools, um, that can dramatically change things. Uh, you know, if the phase can get shifted just by a few samples, it can sound completely different if you're stacking things. So Alloy has been great because um, there's no latency. I can throw it on any track, and you can get that ozone kind of processing in there. That's something I've been I've been yelling at them for years to do, and they finally said, "Okay, all right, we can do it without latency." Um, so those are my key plugins. Uh, so it comes back, it gets beefed up because. Uh, you know, I brought it down. It goes down, like I set the trim at like 12 o'clock, so there's enough room so it doesn't clip the sound card coming back in. Beef back up with the compressors and limiters, and then bounce it down uh, to the hard drive. 